In this video, we are going to go over how to solve one-step equations involving the multiplication of fractions. In a previous video, I went over why the method that I'm about to use works the way that it does. In this video, we're going to go over the process itself, the method. So let's check it out. So we want to undo 3 fourths times x equals negative 5 halves. To do that, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of what's being multiplied by our variable. That will undo the over 4 and the multiplication by 3. So I multiply by 4 thirds. That would be the reciprocal of 3 fourths. And what you'll see when you multiply by 4 thirds is that the 4's will divide out and the 3's will divide out, leaving you with just x. What I do to one side of an equation, as always, I must do to the other. So again, in any equation, make sure you've isolated the variable. That's our number one step. Three divided by three is one. Four divided by four is one, leaving us with just x. On the right-hand side, now focus solely on the multiplication of the fractions. So I don't have any GCFs between five and three or five and two, but I do between four and two. Two goes into itself one time and into four two times. So now we multiply across, so you get negative 5 times 2 is negative 10, all over 1 times 3, which is 3. And that's it. That's how we solve that equation. Very sweet. So we get x equals negative 10 thirds. Let's check out the second example. 5 times t equals positive 3 eighths. Well, we want to undo multiplication by 5, so I would divide both sides by 5. Now, what I notice is, if I'm going to divide both sides by 5, I've got a fraction on the right-hand side. So instead of dividing by 5, I'm going to multiply by 1 fifth, which is the reciprocal of 5 over 1. I'm doing this again because I know I'm going to be dealing with a fraction on the right side, and I'd rather not divide 3 eighths by 5. I think it's easier to multiply by 1 fifth. That's all. Not bad. So we see that the 5 divides with the 5. 1 times 1 is 1. This is also now 1 times 1 is still 1, so you're left with t which is what we wanted to isolate. On the right-hand side, we're going to multiply straight away because there's no greatest common factor between your numerators or the denominators. And so we get 3 times 1 is 3 over 8 times 5 is 40. And your final answer is 3 fortieths. Just as a reminder, I didn't show it in part A, but you can do it in any of these problems. You could check your work by simply evaluating your answer into the original problem. The original problem was 5t is equal to 3 eighths. So I'll take my answer and I will evaluate it in for t. So that's going to be 5 times the t value is 3 fortieths. And that's equal to 3 eighths. So I just, real well, simplify it out. So I've got 5 times 3 fortieths is what I'm doing. That's 5 over 1. And so 5 goes into itself once and into 48 times. And now I'm left with 3 eighths. 1 times 3 is 3. 1 times 8 is 8. Check mark. So that, all of this was just a check. Remember, you can do that with any equation once you get your final answer. All right, two more examples for you, just in case you need them. There are a couple of different types of setups here. Here we've got a fraction, negative 2 sevenths times m equal to a, an integer. So how do we deal with that? Well, the same way we've been dealing with other fractions. You multiply by the reciprocal, which is going to involve that negative. So I'm going to multiply both sides by negative 7 halves. All right, that will take care of the negative as well. What I do to one side, I do to the other. And now from here, it looks like negative 7 divided by 7. That's going to cancel out, leaving us with a negative 1. 2 and negative 2 will divide out, leaving us with negative 1. And a negative and a negative is a positive 1. So I've just verified that m is what we're left with on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, you have 3 times negative 7 halves. It may be easier for you to view 3 as 3 over 1. We have no greatest common factors in the numerators compared to the denominators. So now I'll multiply 3 times negative 7 is negative 21 over 1 times 2. So your final answer, negative 21 halves. Or if your teacher needs you to, you could rewrite that as negative 10 and 1 half. Last but certainly not least, what happens when there's a mixed number involved? change it to an improper fraction, right? That's what I've been grooving you to do in some of the previous videos. So 2 and 1 sixth times y equals 7 twelfths. Don't be scared. We're just going to convert this. 2 times 6 is 12 plus 1 is 13. So I've got 13 over 6 y is equal to 7 twelfths. All right. So from here, I need to undo 13 over 6 times y. So I'll multiply by the reciprocal. And of course, 
What I do to one side of the equation, I must do to the other. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 6 over 13. Now first, let's verify that we got y alone. 6 is divide out, leaving us with 1. 13 is divide out, leaving us with 1. So we're left with just y equals. Now we'll simplify this piece here. 7 has no common factor with 12 or 13, but 6 does with 12. 6 goes into itself one time, the GCF being 6, and into 12 two times. 7 times 1 is 7, over 2 times 13 is 26. So our final answer there, 7 26 which makes some numerical sense, right? I've got a number above 2, and I end up with a fraction less than 1. So we're going to have a relatively small fraction that needs to go in here to get us that final answer. All right, peeps, a solid bunch of problems representing a bunch of different kinds of fraction problems where if you're multiplying by a fraction, the more of the story, multiply by the fractions reciprocal on both sides, and you will have yourself a nice method of solving these equations.